the 1,000 kill mark this season. She has been a bright spot. There's no question about it. Indiana looking to gain some momentum with her. 28% of IU's kills this year coming from the senior's right arm. Legendary coach in the building today in John Cook in his 22nd season for Nebraska. Pretty incredible stat. He has never lost to the Hoosiers 19 and 0, trying to come in and sweep Indiana for the fourth straight series. Nebraska looks for their 13th conference title under John Cook. Indiana under Steve Aird in his fourth season. Another rebuilding year for IU. They sit at 3-12 and 12 in the Big Ten. 12th in the conference. IU under Aird has won just two top 25 matchups. Ready to go here, Nebraska and Indiana. The Cornhuskers in a three-way tie for first place to top the Big Ten at 12-3. and three. They swept IU back in October. The Hoosiers, though, Zach, do get the home court advantage today. It feels like if they could get a signature win, this would be the time to do it to try to turn around their season. Aird saying, you know, we just want to try to build towards next year at this point. And a win like this today, it could really spark momentum for the program. Steve Aird in his four years is trying to build a culture of winning here at Indiana. You can really spark that with a victory here today. It would be an upset, but you and I are talking about it. This atmosphere in here is just incredible. The Nebraska fans have traveled, and I think we're in for a good one today. Starters, not a whole lot of surprises for Nebraska. Kayla Caffey, Maddie Kubik, and Lexi Sun on that front row. Freshman libero Lexi Rodriguez starting as well for the Cornhuskers, along with Lawrence Stiverens and Lindsey Krause. Eklund Hames, the setter as well. She'll be back to serve to start for the Cornhuskers in their red tops. Nebraska in their, or IU, I should say, in their home whites. Underway on a cold Sunday afternoon from Wilkinson Hall. A service air from Hames, and the Hoosiers get the side out bolt. Yeah, Indiana obviously betting, benefiting off of that. Nebraska has not hurt themselves with service airs or reception airs a lot this season. That's why they've dominated so much as of late. IU has lost five sets in a row, and nine of their last ten matches, that only win here at Wilkinson Hall, and five sets a comeback over Rutgers. Out of the back row, the freshman Lindsey Krause makes her name known with the first kill. Yeah, this freshman class is so talented for Nebraska. Griff, John Cook, the culture of winning that he's built here in his 22 seasons, it's a reason they come. They want to win Big Ten titles and national championships. It's been an interesting season, though, for Nebraska. They started out 10-0 in Big Ten play. That's almost unheard of considering how good this conference is. And then they had maybe the toughest stretch of anyone in the season. They played five top 25 teams in a row, four of five teams in the top 15, and they lost three of those matches. It was an absolute gauntlet of a schedule. So there has been some criticism in Lincoln of this team as Kayla Caffey finds the ground, and the Cornhuskers take the lead 2-1, to one, but Nebraska did have a routine three sets to zero sweep of the Maryland Terrapins in the Devaney Center on Friday night. It's to try to build some momentum. The Big Ten title up for grabs. Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Nebraska all tied for first entering today. Another service there. That's I'm by Kenzie Knuckles, and we're tied at two. As rare it is as it is to fate to go 10-0 in Big Ten play to start the season, it's rare to have a schedule in which you face five straight ranked opponents, three of which were on the road. They went two and three in that stretch, but got right back on track against Maryland. Sarami so the serve for Indiana. Right side and Krause. Edwards, that one sails wide. As we mentioned though in the open, the Hoosiers are gonna feed Brianna Edwards a lot. She has been so consistent this year. And we talked with her, we talked with Steve Aird about her and he says, you know, if she's on a team that's winning a little bit more and has a little bit more support around her, you're talking about her as an all Big Ten, second team, first team player. I mean, her numbers really are up there. Another service error by Nebraska. Three service errors by the Cornhuskers here in the very opening moments of this first set. A little bit uncharacteristic sleepiness early by Big Red. And a chance for Indiana to take advantage of this early. If they start to get points within their offensive system, along with the errors Nebraska's already given them, they have a good chance to win here in the first set. That would be getting off to a huge start. West belled in for Indiana at setter. Cam Hayworth out. Hoosiers will rotate those two. There's another kill for Nebraska. Head coach, go ahead, Griff. Lindsey Krause again. 
on that left side. Or, no, actually, Krause was the decoy. That was Matty Kubik. First time we mentioned her name outside of the pregame open. That's Rami just unable to get to that one. But John Cook, he mentioned to us, Griff, Nebraska, he wants them to have a balanced attack, not just a one mm. system. Tony Leakana serve for Nebraska. Out of the back row and Knuckles. Over to Edwards for the Hoosiers. Dug out by the freshman libero, Rodriguez. Kubik sends that long. Side out point, back and forth we go early, all nodded at four. Yeah, Indiana going to want to get this crowd behind them with a good early start. Nebraska's given them some points here early on the airs, but Indiana a chance to take the lead here. Mentioned a very big crowd this afternoon in Wilkinson Hall, third to last home game of the season as Edwards with a service error. The weather is awful outside today in Bloomington, so a little more reason to find a nice warm place to enjoy some Big Ten volleyball and one of the best programs of all time in Nebraska. Pretty much bring a big crowd wherever they go. Certainly everyone's seeking shelter and getting a good one here. It's a good matchup and a good chance for Indiana to really see how they stack up against an opponent that's used to winning. Kubik the serve. Right side and Maddie Saris, the freshman. First time we've seen her, and the Canadian ties it at five. Yeah, Saris is a player that can really step up after Edwards and give this team some kills with her offensive production. She has had moments, really, that just look lightning quick on kills, showing it off there. Second on the Hoosiers in kills, two and a half per set. Kubik out of the back row. Saris the tip. Bad set, but Sun creative just to get that over. And just has to be dumped back over by Westbell. Slide attack put by the back row by Lauren Stiverins, the three-time All-American looking every bit there. That really was fun to watch. The set was perfect. She gets so much elevation on this hit right there. Just so tough to dig that one out if you're Indiana. Hoosiers had their opportunities during that point with Nebraska out of system, couldn't take advantage. Back and forth we go in set one. You're gonna knock off a top 10 team if you're IU, a top 15 team, at least rankings now. Gonna have to stick around early and gain some confidence, and they do so there out of the middle in Kaylee Ramelsburg. Yeah, they definitely have to be fired up for this one. You wanna see how you stack up against Nebraska and an opportunity to give this crowd a competitive match. Both teams making some changes. Users will bring it back in Cam Hayward at setter. She'll come in to serve. Brooke Westbelt will take a seat. He brings in Ashley Zuloff as well. Hoosiers will, both Hoosiers and Cornhuskers will rotate a lot of players, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Saris, good dig by Kubik. Ramelsburg, the dump, found open floor. Cuba couldn't get there, and IU retakes the lead. Exactly, Griff, just spotting an area where she could really just put that one softly in play. No Cornhusker in the area. Point for Indiana. Nebraska's an outstanding defensive team. They lead the Big Ten in opponents' hitting percentage, holding them to below 15% almost every game. They were served just sails long, all knotted at seven. We talked with John Cook about that yesterday, and it's really the pillar he's built of this Nebraska program, and it's been true this year. They've been up and down offensively, especially with a lot of young freshmen. Just seventh in the Big Ten at hitting percentage, which is very low for a Cornhusker team at 226, but defensively have been so strong all season. Ramelsburg again, the transfer from high point. Three kills to start her afternoon. Yeah, they're finding the holes in Nebraska's defense and taking advantage of it here. Indiana has really looked competitive here to start. Perfect set, perfect kill. Hoosier's best offense this season has been out of the middle. Ramelsburg went to the NCAA tournament last year with High Point in North Carolina before transferring into the Big Ten. Right side and the freshman Krause. Morgan Geddes gives it a try. And a monstrous skill by Geddes. Hames couldn't dig it out. This Hoosier offense clicking early. Yeah, and Geddes having to step in for Kari Zumak when she was injured to start the season. And she really impressed this coaching staff, Griff. They love what she brings for them. Trying to bounce back, too, against the Cornhuskers. Geddes didn't have a single kill in the Devaney Center in October. And she hit in the negatives. 
Krause has been active early and she stumbled there. And the Hoosiers take a three point lead here in the first set. And IU was swept by Nebraska, did keep it close in two of the three sets in Lincoln last time. They have a nice little lead here early. Sarah's back to serve for the Cream and Crimson. Out of the middle. Kathy was rejected. Good dig by Cerami. Over to Edwards. Cubic out of the back row. Too much air on that one. And IU on a 4-0 scoring run. How that, about this? That point really started with excellent blocking at the net. They sent it over to Nebraska. Unable to get a lot, an accurate hit there and giving An Indiana their largest lead in set number one. Trying to win their first set against Nebraska since 2019. Hoosiers took the first set in that 2019 matchup here in Bloomington. Cornhuskers though pulled away and ended up dominating the latter stages of that match. Cross court attack, Sutton will get credit for the kill. And Nebraska breaks the 4-0 scoring run. Again, we mentioned the big crowd outside of the Purdue match IU played on a Sunday back in September. This might be the biggest crowd of the season for the Hoosiers at Wilkinson Hall. And certainly Cornhusker faithful. A lot of them made the trip helping with that big crowd as well. Oh, Cerami with the meaningful dump over. And then an overpass, and Edwards finishes it. Now Awkward just, play. Just excellent, though. I mean, a bounce that goes your way. It creeps over the net. Edwards again, excellent defensively. We talked about her kills, but look at the sense of awareness at the net there and able to keep it for Indiana. Point, a four-point lead now. Edwards, the most experienced player on the Hoosiers, only player that has played all four years under head coach Steve Aird here in Bloomington. Service error by Cerami, and it cuts the lead back down to three for IU. You want to maintain some sort of cushion and the airs certainly not helping Indiana. Part of the reason they lead is because of the airs Nebraska have given them on their serves. Freshman libero Lexi Rodriguez back to serve for the Cornhuskers. Four freshmen that will get playing time on Nebraska. Knuckles out of the back row. She's been active early. Edwards. A dig by Rodriguez. Overpass. One by Ramelsburg. Kaylee Ramelsburg has been everywhere for Indiana. She's been excellent to start. Already her fourth kill. Savannah Colheen, I beg your pardon, finishing it there. The two middle blockers for IU, but the Hoosiers lead by four. And there is the Big Ten commissioner in attendance today, Kevin Warren. He's taken in a lot of athletic events at IU over the last couple days, getting a chance to watch some Big Ten volleyball. Making his rounds, basketball, football, and now volleyball. That one sails wide by Stiverins. I do gotta say, someone's gotta give Kevin Warren some company. He's sitting alone. He's the, he's the Big Ten commissioner or someone to be his friend. He's taking it all in. He just loves the atmosphere that all these IU facilities grant in terms of basketball, football yesterday, and some fun here in Wilkinson Hall. That one finds the back line. Brooke Westfeld, the service ace, and the lead is six for Indiana. Nebraska, a shocking start, and we've got a timeout. Indiana didn't score more than 15 points in any set. A start for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who have only lost one set in Big Ten play against a non-top 25 opponent. That was in their first Big Ten match of the season against Northwestern, but it's been all Hoosiers early, Zach. It really has. Indiana's been heads up at the net, good blocking and good setting for their outside hitters. But for Nebraska, this would be a one-point match, right? One-point set, excuse me, if they took away their five errors they have early. Just looks sloppy and asleep. Matty Kubik would be the player to try to get him back into it. ceramic has been good defensively. Kubik again. A spell back in its center for IU. There's the rejection. Lauren Stiverins teaming up with Krause. That traditional Cornhuskers defense coming up strong. It'll be the defense that gets them back into this one. This is heads up communication here. Both of them at the net. Edwards, of course, going for that one. She's been a one man show. Stiverins averaging just over a block per set on this physical Nebraska defense. Fourth in the Big Ten and blocks per set, two and a half. Edwards, 
Good dig by Knuckles. Well, set just totally off from Rodriguez to Cubic. And the Hoosiers steal another point. That is, you said it, Zach. That's the third or fourth point that you're just shocked to see from the Nebraska Cornhuskers who are typically so clean, but it looks like they just heads haven't really gotten out of the side of their outside of the hotel room this morning. Lack of communication and just an awkward touch. Not really sure what to do with that one on that end. Knuckles out of the back row. Westbeld couldn't handle that with Zumach. A little bit of miscommunication there for the Hoosiers. And the lead cut back down to five. It feels like, though, Zach, IU has to find a way now to finish off this first set. That'd be a huge boost of momentum. But you know the Cornhuskers are going to have a late push here. Without question, the fact that Indiana's gotten off to this start, if they don't go on to win the set, Nebraska's going to tell themselves we didn't play anywhere close to our best and still came out with a win in set number one. Indiana has to take advantage. Zumach the chip. And the Hoosiers retake the lead by six. That's a great sign for IU to see Zumach playing well. She has just two kills in the last three games for the Hoosiers and has been dealing with injuries the last two seasons in Bloomington. And again, not putting in a not putting a lot on it, but just softly sending it over. Heads up play, back to a six point lead. Cole Heed back to serve. Right side and Lexi Sun. Cole Heed digs out the All-Americans attempted kill. Sun take two, sends it long. Nebraska can just not find its groove offensively, hitting nearly in the negatives at .038. And the Hoosiers have a seven-point lead. Actually, with that air, they're back to hitting exactly at triple zeros. Yeah, Sun just getting anxious now. When you face a deficit like this, you want to force the issue, just putting too much on that one and sending it out of bounds. One has more than one kill for Nebraska until Lawrence Difference gets her second on the slide attack. That feels like something John Cook and the Huskers need to get back to. Uh, she's really been a bright spot here early. That one perfectly placed in the back right corner, back left corner, I should say. Trying to get Nebraska back in this one. You have to have clean serves, though. Indiana's got an ace, but Nebraska with their several service errors. Saris, the freshman, finds another kill. And Nebraska trying to put together a run. And Indiana, it's side out point after side out point. And the best sign for Indiana right now, everybody contributing. We talked about Brianna Edwards and how good she's been this entire season. Right now it's Saris, Ramelsburg, Zumak even getting in on the action. It's a balanced attack for Indiana. It's resulted in a seven point lead. They have to finish it off though, we'll say it again. A 92% side out percentage right now for the Hoosiers as Hayworth dumps that into the net. That is an absurd statistic against the Cornhuskers though here in this first set. Can't hurt yourselves with those. You want to maintain the cushion. Nebraska knows that if they get this close, Indiana's going to start thinking about possibly blowing this lead. Nebraska's been here before. Nicolin Hames, the setter for the Cornhuskers. And Saris misplayed that dig. Hoosiers lucky to get it back over. Sun tries again. Geddes finds open ground. This defense for Nebraska like a cornfield that has been raised. It's got holes all over the place. <laughs> Look at this though, Geddes, you think she's gonna try and hammer that thing down? Again, soft touch, find open space on the floor where no Cornhusker can get to it. Really heads up play, back to a seven point lead for Indiana. Hoosiers five points away from not just taking the first set, but in dominant fashion. They've been so active, Griff, too. The, the communication, everyone's on the same page. Excellent start. Another side out point as well. Geddes and Sarami tried to save that with their feet. Not soccer. And the Cornhuskers take back that point, but IU win on that 1 4 0 run. That was enough to build a lead. And the Hoosiers, again, it's every side out point, not allowing the Cornhuskers to get back in this game. Knuckles back to serve for Nebraska. Edwards. Cubic gives it a try. She's been quiet so far for Nebraska. Didn't have a good day against Maryland either. Out of the middle and Krause, there's the kill from the middle blocker. 
A transfer from Missouri and other players at an up and down season. Back to back points for Nebraska to cut the lead to five. Kayla Caffey, her second kill of the match. Now winning rallies like that, that can certainly spark their offense. They know they're just five points away. They've closed the lead a bit. Indiana still staring at a five point lead. Ramelsburg again out of the middle. She has been dominant for the Hoosiers. A hitting percentage of a thousand for Ramelsburg. Her fourth kill, and this one the most electric. Four attacks, four kills, and she has dominated Kayla Caffey in the middle. Sarami back to serve for the Hoosiers. A kill for Lindsey Krause. Freshman outside hitter. We already know they will not go quietly. Head coach John Cook will not allow it. He knows what this program expects from its players, even their freshmen. We, we understand how talented their class is, but he knows they're still not out of this one. Four freshmen on the Huskers, and as much as a lot of experience, they return their seven leading set players from last year. They've played a lot of their freshmen this year as Cole Heed dumps that into the net off a bent poor set from Hayworth. Nebraska cuts the lead to four, and that is enough for Steve Ayer to call timeout. Hoosiers four points away from taking the first set, but the Cornhusker with the losing streak just wants his girls to play harder. He said that'll give us a chance to win more sets. They're certainly doing that here today. Lexi Rodriguez to serve for Nebraska. Slide attack. Over to Edwards, finds open ground again. Brianna Edwards hasn't even been the main source of IU's offense, her second kill. We talked about her in the open. At some points has been the only offense for IU, over 25% of their kills on the season. Yeah, exactly, and only with two kills in the first set, but now you're gonna be looking to her to close right now, Griff, within three points of a victory in set number one. She can take you there. She's gotta be excellent in this entire match for Indiana to come up with the upset. Senior Westbell to serve. Right side in Cubic. Saris just misplay dig on the back. Maddie Kubik will get the kill. Just the second kill of the afternoon for the All-American. Understand that you'll see him inching closer in the rear view mirror, but you have to finish this one off. Tony Le Akana. A Hawaiian serve specialist back for Nebraska. Hoosiers get it to Edwards. Five. Can IU get something in system? Edwards. Cubic will give it a try. Good dig by Sarami. Nebraska won the last rally like this. That nearly hit the antenna. The Hoosiers will just have to play it over, and then three Cornhuskers collide. It has been, that has been the story of the first set. Ames, Rodriguez, and Son, just stalled or, or uh, Akana, the third Cornhusker there, all tried to get the dig, and that doesn't work out very well, typically. We thought in a back and forth rally, Nebraska came up with the last one that went close to a minute. That time, miscommunication, looking out of sorts. Everyone converging, no one sold on getting the touch of that one. John Cook wants another timeout, and some of the loudest cheers we have heard at Wilkinson Hall all season. A shocking result here in the first set. Nebraska just looks like they haven't gotten out of bed, and the Hoosiers' offense. And he certainly didn't expect his players to be out of sorts defensively. Mentioned that they're tops in the Big Ten and opponents hitting percentage. That hasn't been the case so far. Two points away for IU. Kubik will try again. That was tipped at the net. Point for Nebraska. Maddie Kubik trying to get going for the Cornhuskers, averaging three and a half kills per set. She has been one of the best players in the country at times this season, but coming off a match against Maryland, she hit below 100, and John Cook criticized her when we talked to him yesterday. Kubik back to serve. Out of the middle and Cole Heed. Good dig by Rodriguez. 
Kubik out of the back row. Maddie Kubik getting going. And the Cornhuskers aren't done just yet. They cut the lead to three. Yeah, don't let her gain some confidence and rhythm. This thing's close again. It's back to three. That time, Sarami converging with Zuloff and unable to dig that one out. They'll be looking to Sarami here to dig out some key ones. Leads the team in that category. the Cornhuskers. What a shocker this would be from Wilkinson Hall. And now the crowd will stand and they'll get behind the Hoosiers. Again, have not won a set since 2019 against Nebraska. Son. Stiverins will go back to serve for Nebraska. Indiana wants to end this thing as quickly as possible. Nebraska wants to hang around. Interesting how much of Knuckles we've seen offensively for Nebraska. Not typically a big offensive force for the Huskers. And not to challenge this, he will. He'll use that one challenge in the set. Or no, he's calling timeout. A, you know, timeout or a challenge. Now it looks like just a timeout. We'll see if we can get a look how close that was at the net. But two straight points for Nebraska. We'll have to stave off two more set points. So it looks like the kill just found the fingertips on the top of the net. Kenzie Knuckles now three kills here in this first. They looked the communication and anticipation on the defensive end, and as close as Nebraska got it down the stretch, within one point, it was 24 to 23, and you felt this place. They just wanted to explode as Nebraska cre crept closer, but Indiana able to finish it off. I think we've got a fun one in store, partner. Oh boy, Indiana did take the first set against Nebraska back in 2019 here at Wilkinson Hall, Nebraska would take the next three sets. Next two were competitive, but the Cornhuskers pulled away. They got to wake up. It was a sloppy first set for Nebraska, 200 hitting percentage. The one positive, though, Maddie Kubik, who had a tough last match, she really got going late for Nebraska. Five kills for the, for the senior outside hitter. She certainly did. She got back her confidence late in that set. We'll definitely look to carry that going forward in this second one. I don't think this is going to be short whatsoever. We've got a long one in store. For Indiana, I just want to mention, Griff, how good it must feel for them to finally be back home. Three straight matches on the road. It spanned an entire week. And now to come home to this type of crowd, incredible. Matches, too, Indiana did not play well in. Start of the second set with Ramelsburg. First time an attempted kill doesn't fall for her. She had 1,000 in the first set with four kills. There's the freshman in Lindsey Krause. Third kill for Krause. John Cook talked about it for Nebraska. He needs to see more variety offensively. They know Maddie Kubik can be really good, but she had 51 attacks against Maryland. That was nearly half their attacks against the Terps. He wants it to be more varied because obviously then it's a lot harder to defend. And that's obviously on the shoulders of the setters to set up a balanced attack and find everybody evenly in the offense. Hoosiers again looking for Ramelsburg, dug out by the Huskers. Right side and Morgan Geddes. High air, sent a little bit long. And the Huskers out to a quick start to this second set. It's exactly what they needed to do. They understand what they're capable of and what they've done in Big Ten play up until this point, coming off of a comfortable win against Maryland in which they were really not challenged even in the second set a little bit. But where Nebraska has dominated on the season, the second and third sets when they close teams out. Ramelsburg. Overpass and Ramelsburg, the second time she finishes, she has been terrific for Indiana early and the side out point for the Hoosiers. Four of seven. Kills and attempts for Ramelsburg continues to impress. Again, we have not mentioned Brianna Edwards' name too much. It's 
been a balanced attack for Indiana. Excuse me, fifth kill for Ramelsburg. Three for Zumok, three different players with two, including Edwards for IU. Right side and Krause, that finds the ground. The talented true freshman, Lindsey Krause, was ranked the number two overall player in all the United States in the 2020 class. Native of Papillon, Nebraska. She's had an excellent season. Certainly in the conversation for Big Ten True Freshman of the Year, as is the server, Lexi Rodriguez, for Nebraska. She finds the ace there. And you said it, Zach. Nebraska just looking a lot more poised here to start this second set, quickly up 4-1. They got off to a tough start in that first set. Never really settled down. You could tell they were eager. They were anxious. They hadn't been in that position for quite some time, especially against a, against a team they've dominated as of late in Indiana. Out of the middle and Ramelsburg again. That is where the Hoosiers are feeding their offense right now. Back row and that was Hames who's going to get credit for the kill. The setter who, as you said, John Cook called the X factor that she is the one that needs to give the Nebraska offense some more variety. Yep, she needs to distribute, pass well enough to facilitate a balanced attack. Indiana though now, Griff, we're seeing lapses in their defensive scheming. Hoosiers have struggled at times defensively in Big Ten play. 12th in the Big Ten at opposing hitting percentage. Kubik sends that long again. She's been too much high air today by Maddie Kubik. She does have those five kills, but she's hitting only 125 as that breaks the 3-0 scoring run by the Huskers. Yeah, you had to break that one off. Nebraska was certainly in a rhythm and have built confidence early on in this set. Now it's Indiana's turn to creep back in. The longer this stays close, the more pressure on Nebraska trying to win a Big Ten title entering the day tied for first place. What a block there by Geddes, but the Husker is able to scramble out of system and save it as our camera disappears for a second, and there it is again. Kubik sends that over. Whoa. Good dig by Ceremi, the pancake. And a little more miscommunication by Nebraska, and Kubik sends it long. Kubik tried to come over and get the set. She was scurried away by the setter in Hames and just looked totally out of sorts there. Have to look at Paula Sarami on that set specifically. That pancake dig, which she goes down with one hand, keeps it alive for Indiana, and they eventually come up with the point. Now they're building some momentum, but Nebraska, their defensive game plan, that's where John Cook feels they prepare so well is defensively digging balls out and blocking at the net. Over to Krause. Edwards gives it a try, deflected at the net, and a good effort by Hames to get there, but she nearly ran into the seats. Nothing she could do. Edwards gets the kill, and the Hoosiers have cut the lead back down to one here in set number two. Now the Hoosiers are going to love that everyone's getting in on the party offensively, but just imagine what their offense would look like if Breonna Edwards really got it going. Edwards averaging three and a half kills per set, and she's been excellent of late. Five of the last seven matches for the Hoosiers, she's had at least 10 kills and hit over 280. A bright spot on what's been another dark season for Indiana Volleyball. Trying to have the biggest bright spot of them all today, but Nebraska extends their lead here in the second set. It's Krause again on that right side. Nebraska certainly not trying to be the storyline of Indiana's entire season because even that set, that's one that Steve Aird is going to look to and say, this is our potential, this is what we can look forward to in the future. John Cook has been saying that about his players in his 22 seasons at Nebraska as they anticipate and expect to win a Big Ten championship. Akana. Sarami misplayed the dig there and Geddes couldn't climb over the seats on the bench to run it down. So after the Hoosiers took a healthy lead in set one, Nebraska had four set points to kill. They killed the first, or they were able to win the first three set points, but on the fourth and potentially final one for Nebraska to even it up, Kari Zumach had the solo block to light this place up and give the Hoosiers just their second set win over a Big Ten top 25 opponent. Kubik rejected at the net again. Maddie Kubik cannot get going. Great defense by Geddes and Hayworth. 
Now that's Cole Heed, excuse me. That was excellent. Cole Heed without a kill or a point, but showing off the defensive prowess at the net, getting two hands and stopping that one from creeping over. Indiana, they're still not beating themselves, Griff. Only three errors on the day, while Nebraska has ten. They've got to clean that up. He's the Hoosiers in blocks. Slide attack with Stiverins, who's been quiet today for Nebraska. I'll try again with Stiverins. Give her a second try, and she's likely to succeed. Uh, without question, Stiverins has been electric on her kills. Again, so much height and length, and the elevation she's allowed to get on these hits. Near impossible to dig that one out. Stiverins is a really interesting story, though, Zach. She had back surgery over the summer, didn't get to start playing with Nebraska until October 1st. And from that surgery and recovery, she lost 20 pounds, 11 of which were muscle. Hoosiers try with Edwards. Rodriguez digs it out. Sun finds the open floor. Nebraska extends the lead to four. But it's Lawrence Stiverance hasn't just been as consistent this year. And obviously, you can understand when you have a surgery and recovery process that is so challenging now in her sixth season with the Cornhuskers. Yeah, and you just think about what she would be able to do. Plays like that, but we previously saw if she was healthy. Service error by the Huskers. Side out point for the Hoosiers. A lead cut to three. Stiverins, three time ABCA All American. Only the third player in the last decade to do that for Nebraska. One of the best Cornhuskers of all time, but. Hasn't been the same player this year. Saris. Sun has been quiet as well today for Nebraska. Over to Zumach. Did that find the back row? No, just sailed long. And the Cornhuskers holding on to a steady lead. Here from Wilkinson Hall in the second set. Back out to four. It's difference back to serve. Yeah, they want to keep the lead comfortable right now. They are getting points out of the system, but Indiana will challenge the last hit by Zumach and see if that one did catch a little bit of the inbounds area. Our first review for the refs, our first test is Zach. Free Zumach's kill and see if it caught the back line or was tipped at the net. Our side referee will take a look over at the monitor. Both teams a chance to reset. Nebraska certainly looking a little bit smoother here in set number two as to be the right call on the floor. That one just missing the white line, I think, Zach. I don't I, know if you saw anything different. I thought about making a guess without the replay, but that replay is we'll take another look at it here. Oh, that's closer than I thought. I'm going to say that this is a call that will be reversed. Oh, Zach getting controversial. Again, it needs to be <laughs> conclusive evidence to be overturned. Awfully close. Great look by our Big Ten network. Plus replay crew. Mentioned though the Huskers, a little bit more rhythm it feels like here in the second set. They've been ahead early, but still doesn't feel fully like Nebraska volleyball. Zach does not pass the test of being a Big Ten volleyball umpire. Call is confirmed. Point Nebraska, and the lead is four for the Huskers. Krause right now leading the way with six kills. Kubik has five kills, but she's hitting Triple zeros right now. She's been very inconsistent. Lexi Sun just two kills. Stiverance three kills for Nebraska. Saris deflects off the hands of Hames and the kill for Maddie Saris. Hoosiers keeping within striking range. The lead cut down to three. Again, IU took the first set 25 to 23 and led for Nearly the entirety of set number one. Trying to pull off a shocker in Bloomington. Sun, that is Lexi Sun at her best. Cross court attack and the lead back out to four. That's just difficult to defend if you're Indiana. You're thinking about blocking at the net and then your back line is not set up to defend the strong hit from Sun. Another player that has dealt with some inconsistencies this year but has all the talent in the world, ABC. All-American second team last year, and two-time All-Big Ten. Out of the back row, and Batenhorst, and the Hoosiers misplay that. First time we've seen the freshman outside hitter in Allie Batenhorst. 
Now, if Indiana wants to continue to have confidence going into further sets, they want to keep this one close at least. Nebraska, you can't let them pull away. Indiana had leads of six and seven, and the Cornhuskers were able to get it down to three, two, and eventually one point before Indiana took the first set. Zumach rejected. How about that? Lexi's son teaming up with Callie Schwarzenbach, the senior middle blocker, for a ferocious block in the Cornhuskers lead by six. Sun gets the kill prior, and now a beautiful block. It deflects off of her hands perfectly to the side of the floor where there were no Hoosiers. Saris. Into the seats went Krause, and the Hoosiers able to finish with Nebraska out of sorts. That's Ramelsburg again. Continuing to impress, has shown signs of brilliance throughout the season. That's heads up right there. Haley Ramelsburg, what a match for her. Six kills hitting 545 on the afternoon. Junior middle blocker, played two years at High Point. First team all Big South last year. This has been one of the best matches of her IU career so far. Dumped into the net by Krause, and the Hoosiers have cut the lead back down to four, a mini 2-0 run. Just need one play to get your confidence back and get a point out of system to creep back in. Again, I mentioned it, can't let him pull away. Hayworth, good dig by Rodriguez. Saris rejected, wow. cradle play by Geddes. How did she find that one? Everything going the Hoosiers way. Now, now this was incredible. Starts <laughs> with Sarami and wow. ends with Geddes. Because Geddes, I mean, she has to see that thing coming at her and her only option is to send it over the net. There's nothing else she could have done with it. Results in a point, outstanding. Incredible hand-eye coordination out of system. Nearly an overpass, and because of that, Ramelsburg with a net violation. So the Hoosiers 3-0 scoring run stopped. A side out point by the Huskers, trying to pull away and even this match at one set apiece. And coach Steve Ayer looking for his third top 25 victory in his fourth season as IU head coach. Knuckles. Other service there for the Cornhuskers. They were struggling with that early in set number one. That's their fifth on the afternoon. They had cleaned it up for the time being. This one bites them here to get Indiana closer. But again, Nebraska could have easily won that first set possibly if they cleaned up the service errors themselves. Matty Saris. Service there by the Hoosiers. That's their fifth as well. Cornhuskers, the number 11 team in the country, 12-3 in, in the Big Ten. Started the season 10-0 in the Big Ten, and have dropped three of their last five, although to top 15 opponents. Ramelsburg, oh, what a pancake there by Rodriguez. And then a ferocious finish by Badenhorst, who's looked excellent as she's entered. A little change of pace for John Cook. And she saw that Sarami was positioned right at the Big Ten logo, and that hit right in front of it to where she could not get it. Heads up kill. Mentioned Krause, the freshman we've seen active early for Nebraska, was the number two ranked recruit in the country by PrepVolleyball.com. Well, Beaten Horse was number three. Edwards. Stiverins, a creative little flick there. IU was ready. Dumped back over by Sarami. There's Krause and the freshman. High air again. Lead cut to four. Still that hitting percentage for Nebraska at 211, now down to 194 actually with that air. Not what John Cook would like. He tries to win his 13th conference title as Nebraska head coach. Out of the middle and Stivrin. Sarami another dig. Geddes. Edwards gives it a try. Good dig by Knuckles. Over to Baton Horse. What a dig by Sarami. Edwards gives it a try. Great defense on both sides. Knuckles with the dig there. 
Batenhorst. And that can't be saved. What great volleyball by both teams there. And Allie Batenhorst making a name for herself. The third kill for the freshman all here in the second set. And out of the three really lengthy rallies that we've seen today, Griff, Nebraska has come up with points after two of them. They just look more active in this set. A completely opposite effort from the first one. Batenhorst started in the Big Ten early in the season. Bench four matches ago for Lexi Sun. Back in today and providing a good spark for Nebraska. Edwards. He finds the kill there and the lead cut to four. The Hoosiers staying within striking range if they can put a run together. Not going away quietly whatsoever. Nebraska has looked like a different team in this first set. But Indiana, that first set, they're trying to show that it was not a fluke. Hoosiers took set one 25-23. Brooke Westbeld. Slide attack with Stiverins, nearly unstoppable. Six years senior, extends the lead back to five. Back and forth we go in set number two. Her hits just look different, and Edwards tries to get up and block that one, but again, outstanding by Stiverins. Fourth kill for the middle blocker. Edwards getting active here in the second set. Rodriguez got the pancake, but no one else was able to help out the libero. Side out, Hoosiers. Zuloff in to serve for IU. A lot more of Brianna Edwards we're seeing here in the later portions of the second set for the Hoosiers. Ramelsburg still leading the way for IU with six kills. Edwards has five. Stiverins again. Sumak on the left side. Out of the back row in Cubic. Blocked, somehow saved. Sun gives it a try. And the joust is won by Indiana. But Nebraska gets a second try. What a point this has been. Sneak attack. Ramelsburg, Holy, excuse me, was ready. Sun gives it a try and finds the back row. What a point again here in the second set. And what poise by Nebraska. It felt like Indiana was going to win that point three different times. That battle at the net was really fun to watch. But this time, Sun again, a recipient of the kill and point for Nebraska after another lengthy rally. Excellent volleyball being played here. A philosophy that really anyone can get behind. Just big plans for the program, season in and season out. Cole Heat. Kubik out of the back row, trying to get going again. There's a kill for Maddie Kubik, her sixth. It's been another tough day for the All-American who had such an incredible start to the season for Nebraska. And their lead has remained steady, three, four, five. Indiana has not crept closer since this one has dragged on. Cubit had 16 kills and hit over 300 against the Hoosiers in Lincoln last month. Today, six kills, but hitting 048. Krause sent that down, using her height. 6-4 frame, take advantage of it at the net. Can't get much higher than she can. Excellent touch. Huskers trying to pull away, take the second set, even us at a set apiece. Ramelsburg blocked at the net. I don't think they're going to give the point actually to Nebraska, or to Indiana, I should say, that violation. Side out point for the Hoosiers, 21-16. Nebraska in front in set number two from Wilkinson Hall. Cam Hayworth, the jump serve for Indiana. Schwarzenbach out of the middle, and the Hoosiers can't handle it. That time, just not knowing who was going to take that one. That crept over to the right side. Schwarzenbach, beaten horse re-entering here for Nebraska. John Cook in the second set has Throwing some different players into this match. Try to get this Nebraska offense going. Starting to rev up, but it doesn't feel like it's at 100% right now. Sun. 
Geddes. Krause just has to dump it over. Geddes blocked but out. Point for the Hoosiers. Lead cut back to five. It's been steady there. Nebraska keeps their cushion while Indiana continues to not go away. Again, surpassing 15 points in this set. Did not do so in the straight sets they lost in back on October 13th. That, of course, was in Nebraska. Canadian freshman Saris to serve for Indiana. Dumped into the net. Not what the Hoosiers could afford there. And Nebraska two points away from tying us at a set apiece. Lexi Rodriguez, freshman libero, back to serve for the Huskers. Trying to even us over an hour after we started playing volleyball. Good dig by Cerami. Edwards blocked by Stiverens. Edwards take two. Good dig on the back row by Knuckles. Batenhorst tipped and the kill for the freshman. It's a potpourri of set points for Nebraska. Their points have just looked different in this set. The way they're coming up with them, of course, the quick rallies that we've seen. They've won them here in set number two, but just a different energy surrounding this team right now on the cusp of a win in set number two. Rodriguez dumps it into the net. The Hoosiers stave off one set point. They'll need to stave off six more, though, to try to take this second set. So Rami, the libero transfer from Florida on the back line for Indiana. Right side and Krause, there's set number two for Nebraska. Lindsey Krause with the kill, 25-18. The Cornhuskers have tied us at a set apiece. Yeah, certainly order restored if you're in Nebraska. You come Back in Wilkinson Hall, Indiana and Nebraska all tied at a set apiece. For Indiana, really shocked Nebraska who looked slow in that first set. A good bounce back, Zach, by the Cornhuskers in the second set. Looked like a different team in that one. The energy, the anticipation, and of course, the kills on their end. I mean, Stiverens, she was outstanding. Indiana did their best. Nothing to hang your head about. But the effort was different for Nebraska. That'll carry their momentum forward in set number three. Lindsey Krause, the True freshman out of Pavilion, Nebraska, leading the way for the Huskers with eight kills, a 278 hitting percentage. She's been really good for the Huskers. Cubic six kills, but still hitting just 048. Huskers, though, just kind of that those uncharacteristic service errors, miscommunications were gone in the first set, and the Hoosiers' offense was good, but it wasn't great as it was in the first set. Kaylee Ramelsberg leading the way for IU, seven kills, still hitting 500 on the afternoon. Brianna Edwards has five kills, but hitting 111 for the Hoosiers. Sean Cook hoping to get out of Wilkinson Hall with another victory. He's never lost to Indiana. Took over all the way back in 2000, before me and Zach were even born, and 19-0 against the Hoosiers. Tossing out some shirts, which is causing a brief delay here at Wilkinson Hall before we get started. The third year gym of Indiana. Nicolin Hames back to start the third set. Saris. Sun. Sent long again. 
going to be important for Indiana to get the lead here early. They've already done so, but if you can build a cushion similar to what you did in set number one, then you've got Nebraska being a little bit more anxious as the set goes on, knowing that they need to close the gap. Indiana was unable to do so in that second set. Nebraska controlled it start to finish. All the pressure on the Huskers today, trying to win another Big Ten title. Out of the middle, Kathy, who's been very quiet. Krause again. Geddes, point Indiana. Now leading by two, and let's get that offense if you're Indiana back to what you saw in set number one. But Nebraska on their end, they're going to they're gonna consider the first set a fluke. They really are going to say that their errors, they beat themselves, and they need to control this one the rest of the way. Caffey did not play in that second set for Nebraska, probably in part because Kaylee Ramelsberg was so dominant. I use middle blocker in that first set. Back in here for the third. Good pancake by Saris. Right side and Krause again. She has been excellent today. 10 kills against IU in Lincoln. She's got eight here in the third set. This time again, finding space on the floor for an early kill for Nebraska. Knuckles back for the Huskers. Hoosiers led almost the entirety of set number one, held on as Nebraska put together a late rally for 25-23 victory. Huskers responded with control of the second set. 25-18, Sarah sends it long, all nodded at two. Neither team has really surrendered leads. Whatever a cushion, whenever a cushion has been built two, built two or three points, that team's gone on to hang on, but neither team has pulled away in either set. Knuckles. Ramelsberg out of the middle again. Right side and Batenhorst, that had a knuckleball element to that attack. Right side and Krause sends that long. And the Hoosiers retake the lead. It feels like for Nebraska, Lindsey Krause is gonna be the main focus of attack the rest of the way. Gotta get her going without question. Didn't see much of her in the first set. We're gonna change that here. Been electric though of late for the Huskers with nine kills on the day, hitting 238. What a dig by Hayworth, thought for sure that hit the ground. Caffey, an awkward looking kill, and then the block by Geddes and Coley turning away Batenhorst. It was interesting, Caffey celebrated as she thought that thing, there was no chance it would not land. Goes down as a point for Indiana literally celebrating until it's sent back over and she realized that Indiana got the kill. So Remy on the back line for the Hoosiers. Basin Horst. Edwards gives it a try. Right side and Krause. Edwards. Knuckles able to save it on the back row. Batenhorst, another try, finds the hardwood. No one diving for that one quick enough if you're Indiana. Allie Batenhorst entered in the second set. The freshman's been a good change of pace for the Huskers. Another well, sixth position outside hitter like Maddie Kubik. Rodriguez. Good save by Hayworth. Saris will dump it over. Oh, what creativeness by Stivrins. A little bump, and she found the hardwood again. Yeah, a bit of trickery on that touch, not knowing where this one was gonna be sent with the offhand, keeps it in play. It's amazing how much Sharami is on the floor, really the vital element to IU's defense. Seemingly everywhere for the Hoosiers, but couldn't get to that knuckler. I'm going to clean up some of the sweat and slipperiness that is largely a result of Ceremi being a four monster today for the Hoosiers. She's got 11 digs. Saros has 12 as well. 
Oheed blocked. Edwards. Right side and Krause blocked by Coleheed. The Hoosiers' fifth block of the afternoon. In set number one, it was the most efficient offense we've seen this year. Now back to set number three. Their anticipation at the net is excellent here early. Hoosiers early in the season, really physical at the net, mainly with Coleheed and Ramelsburg. Kind of went away as we entered Big Ten play, but Hoosiers good today. Tenth in the Big Ten at 2.3 blocks per set. Edwards. Rodriguez, reliable libero today for Nebraska. And Badenhorst finds the kill. Tied out at, tied up at five. Back and forth we go here in set number three. Not much Zuma could do with that one. A lot of velocity on it. Spun out of bounds. Tied at five. This has been the most even set that we've seen in terms of both teams' starts. And the score dictates that. Title set number three in this best of five match, and Akana with the service ace, the service air, excuse me. Eight service airs for the Huskers today. 16 total airs. Knuckles out of the back row sent long. Out of the locker room, I don't think this is a start John Cook was looking for. You really thought, I certainly thought that after that second set, they'd get back to the Cornhuskers that we saw earlier in the season. Good dig by Knuckles off a net cord. Over to Saris. What a play by Connolly to save it. Zumach. Peyton Horse gives it a try, and Westbeld tip didn't end up helping the Hoosiers' defense there. Good defense by Keone Le Akana, the sophomore libero, helping out Rodriguez on that point. They won't go away at any point in any set. They're sitting there, and they're still saying, we have not played our best volleyball. If they're able to get out of here with a victory in the match, they can still say that they chalked it up as not our best effort, but still good enough to win. Kubik back in the match for the Huskers. Saris, rocket saved by Kubik. And that one hit off the antenna and a Hoosier point. Right in between the two blockers at the net. Actually off the, the stanchion where the line judge stands, which is out of bounds. Service air by Colheed. Nebraska trails by one here in the third set. Mentioned John Cook in his 22nd year at Nebraska. Four national championships, 12 conference titles, the fifth most wins of any college volleyball coach all time. An expectation when you enter the Nebraska program of trying to win a national title at service. Sails wide by Stiverens. Hoosiers a two-point lead. It's interesting, Zach, when we talked with John Cook yesterday and we asked about the expectation of winning national championships, and he says, well, we don't talk about it on a daily basis, but the expectation is there. We literally have a blank yep. banner yep. next to our last national championship banner in our locker room. And that can't be ignored. Whenever you're in the stadium, whenever you're practicing or playing a match, those banners are staring you in the face. It's the expectation of what the ultimate goal is as the attack by Kathy was tipped, and she'll get the kill. And, and all the props in the world to John Cook taking over, leaving a good job in Wisconsin, remaining in the Big Ten, remaining in the Big West, taking over for one of the most legendary volleyball coaches in Terry Pettit, who had close to 600 wins in his illustrious career. He takes over for him, and they don't miss a beat. He shares similar goals with Steve Aird in that as much as Steve Aird is trying to build a culture of winning, John Cook's trying to maintain his. Back row. It caught the line. Ramelsburg, her eighth kill, and IU leads 10 to 8. Keeping this one in play just enough to collect another kill. And certainly, two programs very different. Indiana only has one All American ever. They've only once gone past the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. Nebraska. 
Doesn't lose in the NCAA tournament, typically until the second week. Edwards finds the ground, and the Hoosiers lead by three. Just one more note, Zach, on Nebraska and their history. They've been ranked in every AVCA poll since it was released in 1982, which is incredible. The only college volleyball team ever to do that. Stanford's streak was broken last year. And you talk about IU only once ever making it into the Sweet 16. Nebraska has made it every year under John Cook, at least to the Sweet 16. Nine of his 20 years, have their nine of his 21 years into the Final Four. Stiverin's long and the Hoosiers lead by four here in the third set. It has not been a national championship performance to say the least for much of this match in Bloomington. But I said it, when you play a team like Nebraska and you're Indiana, you're looking over at the other side of the net at a program that you aspire to be in terms of winning that often and going into the season with expectations. Steve Aird understands that this is a rebuilding year for Indiana, but the chance to bring back almost everybody who's eligible, you hope that they'll return and you hope that they can be part of that culture and begin that here for Indiana as they're taking a look at this one. Certainly a top 25 victory would be part. Back in Bloomington, 12 to eight, Indiana leads Nebraska. After a short review was confirmed a Hoosier point, the ball sailed long. IU trying to go up two sets to one here at Bloomington. Griffin Epstein, Zach Ebrahim. On a Big Ten Plus, our outstanding Big Ten Plus crew back in the truck. Director Christian Steiner doing a great job as the Hoosiers lead by four here in set three, trying to pull off a stunner. Maddie Sarris back to serve. Service air by the freshman. Breaks the 3 0 scoring run for IU. John Cook challenging that call, and it just looked like a frustration challenge by Nebraska. That rhythm that they had in the second set has disappeared again here in the third set. Kubik exits, and Ali Badenhorst re-enters on that left side for Nebraska. Just a roller coaster of an afternoon for Nebraska. Even their highs have not been up to standard, up to par. Out of the middle, and Kaylee Ramblesburg look out below. And this one is hit as hard as you'll see. Firing up the bench. Just the velocity and the power. No chance at a dig there. And it's a massive kill for Ramblesburg, her ninth. Nine kills, 529 hitting percentage. Not a single attacking air. She has been on fire today for Indiana. Beaton Horse finds the back line. Boy, has the freshman been good today for Nebraska, and the lead cut back down to three. Showing this coaching staff what she's capable of. Obviously a talented recru recruiting class. You come to Nebraska to win Big Ten titles and national titles. She is certainly part of this program's future. Lexi Rodriguez, the libero, on the back line with another service error. She's had a couple of those today, and the Cornhuskers have had 10 service errors to just two service aces. Uncharacteristic struggles from the back line for the Huskers, and as every volleyball coach knows, serve and pass has to be at least the start of a successful day on the court, and Nebraska has at least not had that first element today. Right side of Badenhorst. Edwards. And the Huskers take the point. It was set up by the tag team block by Krause and Stiverins. Huskers cut the lead down to three. Trying to take this third set. Prevent what would be a very large amount of pressure if they fell behind two sets to one to one of the bottom feeders, at least in the standings in the Big Ten this year. The fundamentals just not what they've been all year. Westfeld over to Edwards. Take two for Edwards. And another kill for the senior out of Oregon. Don't let her get going. It's been a balanced attack. It's been a lot of Ramelsburg showing her stuff, but Edwards will never come out of a match without giving it her best. 
gets Indiana another point there. They can feel it. I mean, Nebraska's not playing their best, and I'm not sure what you can chalk that up to at this point, but Indiana is taking every advantage of it here in set number three. Seven kills for Edwards, and the service ace for Ashley Zulop. Misplayed by the Huskers again. You've got the lead back to five, and they're going to try and pull away here. There is a definite amount of energy and vibe starting in this building. A feeling of something special as Cole Heed finds the block. A six-point lead for the Hoosiers. Building on it again, this time defensively. And a great block at the net. Backtrack to Stivrens, the slide attack. Too much for the Hoosier defense and a much needed side out point for Nebraska to stay within striking range. She just takes off on that right side and there's not, not much you can do with it as she sends it across the net for a kill. Still don't think Nebraska's gonna pull away. Don't anticipate this one getting much uglier for Nebraska. They know what they're capable of. It's just a matter of them bringing it to fruition. Maddie Kubik back in for Nebraska. She has been silent in this third set for the Oscars. Saris finds the back row again. A six point lead again for IU. And the Hoosiers feeling it in the third set. Just getting those hits perfectly placed on the back line. Saris and Spurts today has been excellent as well. So many names you can mention. So many contributors for Indiana offensively and defensively. It's just hard to reason what we're seeing right now. It doesn't follow any trends we've seen at all this year. Stiverins with a mad attack, but dug out by Colheed. What a dig there by the Hawaiian libero for Nebraska, but that is sent long. Good defense by Akanu, but out of the middle, was it tipped? Yes, it was. So Kubik will actually get credit for the kill there. Oh, no, it found the back line, excuse me. So that's the call. So good defense by Akanu. Set up Kubik for her kill. And the lead back down to five. Ani Evans, backup setter in to serve for Nebraska. Zaris, long. Lead back down to four for the Huskers. Ramblesburg out of the middle. What a save by Evans. Right side and Alexi Sun with a ferocious kill. And the lead cut down to three. The Huskers have three points in a row. Sun has, Sun has really been impressive today. Over on the left side, vicious attack there, keeping it in play and hopefully sparking momentum for Nebraska now on a 3-0 run. And every time Indiana has built any sort of lead, any sort of cushion, six to five points, Nebraska has been able to narrow it down to three now. Fifth kill for Sun. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment, 18 to 15. The business end of this third set coming up next on Big Ten Plus. We're close to their best. The longest scoring run of the day for the Huskers now at four points. Hoosiers desperately need a side out point. Saris. Sun again, Lexi Sun, three straight kills, and the lead cut to one. Just on fire and showing it off again, unstoppable on the left side. She has been the momentum spark. They needed a spark so badly here in the third set, and Sun has shown through. Ramelsburg out of the middle. Krause the overpass. Locked, but the Hoosiers keep it alive. Zumach just has to dump it over. Caffey, and the Hoosiers take the point. It knuckled off the net, maybe off the hand of Ramelsburg, and the side out point that IU so desperately needed is there. Yeah, just when this thing was getting uncomfortable, Griff, you get a defensive play to stop their 5-0 run. 
got to do something about Lexi Sun. They're going to continue to find her in this set and for the rest of the match, I anticipate. And you have to key on her defensively, see where she's been hitting the ball, or she's been effective, and there hasn't been much you can do with the kills, but anything you can do defensively to stop her. Here's done a good job in this third set, really, until the last couple points. Controlling play. Sun again. Saris for the Hoosiers, dug out by Rodriguez. Caffey out of the middle, good save by Hayworth, but Geddes couldn't tumble over her feet fast enough to dig that out, and the Huskers with the side out point, lead cut back down to one. Deanna at one point led by six, the 5-0 run cut it to one. Now a six to one run overall, and Nebraska has looked like the better team in the past 10 minutes. Dylan Hames, the setter. Saris now on the right side. Sun, no, net violation. Hoosiers five points away from taking a two sets to one lead, but Nebraska still has the momentum here in the latter stages of the third set. IU led by as much as six points earlier in set number three. Now they do, Griffin. They look like they would, without a doubt, be the first team to reach 20. Now it looks like Nebraska could inch even closer. Maddie Saris trying to string some points together for the Hoosiers. Net, Net finds the service there. That's not going to help the Hoosiers. It's not, but they haven't done it very much today. Only their eighth compared to Nebraska's 20 airs overall. That's just where the difference has been. Uncharacteristic mistakes on Nebraska's end. Indiana has been able to take advantage up until this point. We'll see if that continues. Lexi Sun, the service ace. What can she not do? Three straight kills to go on a run for Nebraska. And now from the back line, she's knotted it at 20. Exactly. I would just put her wherever she can do damage right now, whether it's serving up the left side, outside hitting of the net. It's been all Lexi Sun in this third set. Trying to take over for the Huskers. And back-to-back -back aces for Lexi Sun. Two-time All-Big Ten first team and All-American taking over for the Huskers. Standing applause from the Husker faithful. They lead here in the third. It's just an incredible effort on her part. Single-handedly leading her team all the way back. And now they lead. And it's been all Lexi Sun. Hoosiers need an answer. 21-20, Nebraska in front here from Bloomington on the Big Ten Plus. Or visit the website at staroralsurgery.com. Town, Nebraska in front 21 to 20 in a tight third set. The story, Lexi Sun. She has been electric for the Huskers. Three straight kills and part of a 5-0 run and now back-to-back -back aces for the senior from Encinitas, California near San Diego. Five of their last seven points responsible for number 11. Ramblesburg out of the middle. That's been the Hoosiers' offense today. We'll try Edwards here instead. Another block. Now Geddes. And a net violation by Nebraska. Hoosiers needed that point to get Sun off the back line, and we're tied at 21. And this set has been unlike any of the previous two. We finally see a lead completely shift and turn on its head. Nebraska took it 21 to 20. Indiana knots it back up. We'll see who can win another close set, similar to how set number one went down to the wire. 
Both of these teams have struggled in close sets this season. John Cook talked about it yesterday, and Steve Aird has talked about it in length. This team's still learning how to win those. Krause's been quiet, but she comes alive there. The side out point for Nebraska. And they needed it most, and Maddie Saris just could not dive under that one and save it in time. Nebraska back in front. Freshman into the double digits. Ten kills for Krause. Rodriguez. Ramelsberg out of the pole heat, excuse me, out of the middle. And she sent it wide. Nebraska two points away from coming from behind to take set number three. Now it's not just Lexi Sun, everyone else contributing now. Is this going to be challenged? Green card is out. Indeed it will. Steve Aird using his challenge here in the third set to take a look. What's a key point? seen any challenges overturned. Both coaches have had one apiece so far. Both calls have stood. Nebraska trailed by as many as six points here in this third set, but Lexi Sun has led them all the way back. Trying to go up two sets to one and sneak out of Bloomington with a 13th Big Ten victory and remain at least in a tie for first place in the Big Ten with Wisconsin and Minnesota, who are both also playing today. And it was just curious. I mean, the start that they got off to, we're going to take a look at this one and see if it will indeed stand or will be overturned. I believe that will stand. Maybe I can get back to 500. <laughs> but, but at the same time, Griff, Nebraska and head coach John Cook said, we, we play in the Big Ten. And that will be Nebraska's point. Outstanding. One for one on the day. We play in the Big Ten. Best conference in college volleyball. Every team presents a threat. I'm not saying that they overlooked Indiana, but they certainly weren't expecting to play like they have, but they still have a chance to win here in set number three. Only the second time Nebraska has lost a set in Big Ten play to a non-top 25 opponent. Slide attack with Coleheed. What a dig on the back row by Knuckles. A miss set there, though. Ames just off the mark with the left side of her offense. And the Hoosiers with the side out point. That's been an issue, especially Ames and Stiverins. And Stiverins coming back from that injury. Those two have been a little bit out of rhythm times this season. Emily Fitzner into the game for IU. Third string setter for the Hoosiers to serve. Cubic long. It has not been Maddie Cubic's day, and we are tied at 23. Curious to see if head coach Steve Aird is today here in Wilkinson Hall, and it's taking place next door as well in a matter of moments at Assembly Hall. That game on ESPN, 5 o'clock. It's reversed. Wow. Nebraska point. So there must have been a touch at the net. We didn't see anything on the replay. We've got a couple more angles, and Steve Aird quite surprised. He does not look too happy at that call. That is a massive call, and just like that, Nebraska has two set points. Wow. And that's a hard one to stomach if you're Indiana. Now you're playing for your life here in set number three. The mentality, though, has to be no matter which team ends up coming away with this one, both teams are going to anticipate a lengthy, possibly five set full match. Hoosiers took set one. Nebraska responded with.
block there, entered today with 37 blocks on the season. Hoosiers broke a 9-0 scoring run by Nebraska. Can they put together a big one of their own? Laid down by Stiverins. Hoosiers get it to get it. She sends it wide. The Huskers 10 points away. In the game, number six. The momentum changed when Lexi Sun won five out of six points for Nebraska, part of a 6-0 scoring run. She had three straight kills. She had two aces. And the Huskers have taken that momentum into the four sets. You can pinpoint that as a moment when the match completely flipped on its head. There always is one. Batenhorst. Edwards and Gosnell nearly running into each other, and Sarami has to dump it over on the third touch. Slide attack with Stivrins. Boy, did she go up and get that one. Huskers lead back to eight. Yeah, that time elevating way up there to softly tap it over. The set was no doubt a little bit high from Hames, but Stivrins helped her out. Went up and got it. Cole Heaton Edwards anticipating possibly having an opportunity to block a shot at the net. They jump early. Edwards. Stiverin slide attack. Oh, how did the Hoosiers keep that up? I don't know. I don't think they know. Stiverin's again. Pancake by Sarami, not good enough when it's Lauren Stiverin's, and now she's putting her mark on this four set. Gotta give some credit, too, to Nicklin Hames, the setter, who we talked about. John Cook said the X factor, and if you want to look, well, why is Nebraska's offense finally starting to fire on all cylinders? A uh, big reason is the 2019 and 2020 Big Ten setter of the year. Certainly finding a rhythm. The touch has been really pretty here to start set number four, and she's setting everyone up beautifully. Akana. Ramelsburg has been, holy, excuse me, but the middles have been shut down by Nebraska. It's a block by Stiverins again, and the Cornhuskers pulling away. They lead by 10 in set four, trying to close out a four set come from behind victory in Bloomington. Back in a moment with the end of the four set, you're watching Big Ten Volleyball on Big Ten Plus. Four. Nebraska, it's been a long, challenging day for the Cornhuskers, but they have finally figured things out here in the fourth set. Took sets number two and three, three in dramatic come from behind fashion, and they've taken that momentum into the fourth set. Up on a dominant lead, a 4 0 scoring run right now. They had a 9 0 scoring run as well to start this four set. They have certainly found themselves. They're playing their game. They're playing the right way and taking advantage of Indiana's miscues. Edwards. Out of the back row and Knuckles sent long. Oh. Hoosiers cut the lead to nine. Changes for the Hoosiers. Westfeld in at center, Hayworth out. Again, those two will switch. It's. A little bit unique, typically most Big Ten teams, you stick with one setter, but Steve Aird has kind of struggled to, to pick one just because Westbelt is the experienced senior. Hayworth, though, the freshman that will be playing long term here in Bloomington as the slide attack by Stiverins. Boy, does she make it look easy, and boy, has Lauren Stiverins been good here in the fourth set. You just had to think that Nebraska would eventually show who they truly are, who they're ranking in the country and in the Big Ten says they are a top 15 team here flexing their muscles in set number four. And they really took control in the second set. 
won the third set in comeback fashion, and now are dominating here at set number four, trying to close out the Hoosiers. Kubik back to serve. Edwards again. Back row and Kubik blocked by Colheed, and the Hoosiers can't save it. Hoosiers cut the lead down to nine, but they're running out of time. That's exactly right, Griff. It's going to have to be one of those runs. You don't have to get it all back in one run, but if you can slowly chip away and get into the teens before they get to 20. Lexi Sun back in, and she can't stop shining. She has dominated the Hoosiers in sets three and four. Another kill for Sun. That's her ninth. And what's new? Again, the velocity on this. Getting height up. No chance for a blocker to get a hand on it. And Sarami, who's so excellent at digging balls out, can't even get to that one in pancake fashion. Special day for Lexi Sun. Stiverins has stepped up in the fourth set. It's been an off day for Maddie Kubik, the star for Nebraska. Others have come alive. Gosnell just plays that over. Out of the middle, and Caffey rejected. Gosnell and Colhe contribute on the block. Indiana's gotten the majority of their points that way. Just anticipation at the net, blocking shots down and rejecting for points here. 11 blocks today for the Hoosiers, an impressive mark. It's the Nebraska team that you would think would be the more physical at the net. The Hoosiers offense has subsided here, especially in the fourth set, hitting percentage down to 150. Nebraska, not a great day either at 210. Is Kubik out of the back row? A much needed kill for Maddie Kubik. Lead back out to 10, and the Huskers closing in on a victory. Yeah, Kubik out of the back row, out of the sky on that one, just flying in and collecting a kill that certainly could salvage a good afternoon for her. She has nine kills now. Michael and Haynes. Over to Gosnell who gives it a try. Zumach. Hoosiers out of system. Net violation though on Kathy who bumped the net. And the Hoosiers cut the lead back to nine. They've stabilized themselves, but they're going to need a big run. Well, they have, but they didn't even get the ball over to Nebraska's side of the net. That time, the Cornhuskers blocking brilliantly again, but Indiana cutting it to within 10. Hayworth the serve. Over to Lexi Sun, another kill for Sun. Needed two kills today to enter in the top 20 all time in Nebraska's all time career kills leader. She's had more than enough of that today. With that kill, her 10th. And she's tied with Lindsey Krause for most on the team today. It's been her day through and through, coming alive in the third set and has not looked back. Two service aces as well were big in the third set. Gosnell. Over to Ali Batenhorst, who finds ground. An 11-point lead for the Huskers, and you said it, Zach. It has taken four sets, but Nebraska finally looking like a national championship contender here in set number four. Certainly the ball's dropping in play. They're finding the open spaces on the floor, collecting kills at a deadly rate. Hermelsberg plays it over. That will be her 11th kill on the day. Well, plenty of positives, though, Zach, I think, to take away for IU, who, as I mentioned, really played a dismal match against Illinois, had a disappointing loss as well to Iowa a couple weeks ago in Iowa City, just a day after the Hawkeyes fired their head coach. It was just the second win on the season for Iowa, but the Hoosiers have played one of their better matches at times this season as Gosnell dumps it into the net. Gonna fall to three and 13, but they still have a couple more opportunities. Rematch with Illinois next Friday, and they take on Iowa on senior day and, and Steve Aird said it, you know, at this point in the season, we're not gonna maybe reach our goals of trying to be competing midway, maybe in the midway portion of the Big Ten or around the NCAA tournament bubble, but we can still continue to build for next year and take some positives away and they will today. Absolutely. Ramelsburg at the center of that if you want to look offensively. Overpass by Sir Remy. Nebraska five away. 
The only set today that's been a true blowout. Beaten Horse finds the back row, 21-25. For the Cornhuskers, they'll go to 13-3 in the Big Ten. We'll have to look at how Wisconsin and Minnesota did today, but if they both win, it's like a three-way tie atop the Big Ten. And they've got everything in front of them. Number 15, Penn State, comes to the Devaney Center next Friday. That's going to be a huge match, 8 o'clock on the Big Ten Network. And they've got Wisconsin and Purdue on the road in the last week. They've already defeated Penn State in Penn State and Purdue at home. Huge matches down the stretch of the season. Certainly have to play better than they did today, but they finally figured things out here in the fourth set. And Lexi Sun, who's had an up and down season, was absolutely brilliant, as was Lauren Stiverin's big fourth set for her. Geddes. One point here with the Huskers four points away. Krause's been good too, and she finds the back row. The 11th kill for Lindsey Krause. Allie Badenhorst has 11 kills as well. And, and it's just interesting when you think of Nebraska, how experienced they can be, but that they use two of the freshmen. And they've been two of their best players today. Oh, they've come up huge, and the balanced attack that John Cook was looking for has come to fruition as well. Five players with over nine kills. Can't get much better than that. Rousey. Edwards at a tough angle. Baden Horse plays it across. Over to Edwards. That will fall for Brianna Edwards. The eighth kill of the day for Edwards. Could have used a lot more from her today. Indiana did everything they could in the first set. Really looked clean offensively. They've gotten away from that here in later sets as Nebraska has flexed their muscles. An 038 hitting percentage today for Edwards. Nowhere near good enough for the Hoosiers' most experienced player. Ramelsberg has had a big day, but IU's offense not really great after a first set when they played one of their best sets offensively. Had their chances in the third set, couldn't close it out. And the Cornhuskers after that service there, two points away from a hard-fought four-set victory here in Bloomington and make it two wins in a row after that tough stretch of five top 25 teams in a row where they lost three of the matches. And I think as much as Indiana was happy to come out with the first set, not sure they knew it was gonna be a sign of things to come because of how good Nebraska has been historically and just how abysmal they looked in that first set, just weren't themselves at all. But their struggles in the third set, but again, we mentioned it as Batenor sends it long. It was really Lexi Sun who turned it around. I mean, Nebraska trailed by six points in that third set. It really felt like the Hoosiers could just keep it up, stay steady, as they did in the first set. We're going to be able to find a way to go up two sets to one, really put the pressure on the Cornhuskers. And Lexi Sun just took over for Nebraska. 6-0 run to tie it at 20 apiece. And the Huskers were able to pull it out 25-23. Lawrence Stiverens huge in the, in the fourth set with the slide attack kill. And there it is. Match points here for Nebraska. It's taken over two hours for the Huskers. A lot harder than probably most of them thought. But it will be Maddie Kubik back to serve for the Huskers to try to close things out in Bloomington. And their 20, 21st win in a row over Indiana. As their fans will stand and applaud. Edwards. Tuck out by Kubik. Dumped over by Hames. Edwards another try, that will fall to the ground and the Hoosiers stave off one match point. John Cook 19-0 against Indiana in his career since joining in 2000. Nebraska's only lost IU it's all the way back to 1988. Looks like it won't happen today. Zuloff the serve. Stiverens long. Hoosiers stave off. Two set points, Go a little bit longer here in the fourth set. 25-23, IU took the first set, 25-18. Nebraska in the second, and that come from behind. Set three win, 25-23. Stiverens again. Hoosiers keep it alive, Gosnell. And a net violation, Hames ran into the net. IU finally on a run. It's just likely coming too late here for the Hoosiers, who Need to kill off nine more points. They've killed off three of them so far. Zuloff back to serve again. Oh. 
Stivrins again. Suloff plays it over. Out of the back row in Cubic. And another net violation on Nebraska. John Cook calls timeout. So after what we thought, Zach, we, Nebraska could finally take some positives of figuring it out. A little bit of a struggle here to find one final point. And I think for the Huskers, you look at a challenging schedule, obviously going into the NCAA tournament where it's at least final four busts for every Husker team. It's been the story all season. They just need to be more consistent if they want to win a Big Ten title, if they want to win their sixth NCAA championship. Yeah, a lot of film that Coach Cook is going to look at and obviously not like the way they got off to a bad start in set number one with service errors in set number three, falling behind by six points. And when they were looking for that one spark, Lexi Sun was able to supply it. This difference has been outstanding the entire day. But Griff, it just comes down to the best teams find a way to win when they aren't at their best and when they don't have their best stuff. That's been the case today. The defense has especially been good in third and fourth sets as it has been all year for Nebraska, but only a 206 hitting percentage today against an IU team that has really struggled defensively in Big Ten play. And certainly something to work on for John Cook. He entered the latter stages of Big Ten play, four matches in Big Ten play remaining after today for everyone. The best conference in college volleyball, and boy, it's going to be a fun finish, potentially a three-way tie at the end of the day between Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin to sign a Big Ten champion. Point number four for Nebraska. Stiverins tries again, and she sends it long again. IU has staved off four match points. It has been cut down to eight. Been impressive. They're hanging around. Again, won't. Nebraska will look back and not like the way they started. Clearly not like the way they finished. Is this the point for the Huskers? Right side in Sun. Gosnell. Sun again, and Lexi Sun finishes it. Who else? The woman that turned around the match for Nebraska with the match winning kill and the Huskers, a hard fought, come from behind. Four set victory in B-Town. It's only fitting that the player that completely turned the match around is the one that finishes it off. One of her best performances of the year. So effective with her 11 kills and a hitting percentage of 31. Outstanding effort from her. John Cook, not pleased with the effort through and through, but you still come out with a victory and still some things to build on. Plenty of things for John Cook to talk about on the plane ride back to Lincoln, but Nebraska will get ready for number 15 Penn State, at least in a tie for first place in the Big Ten. No one can complain about that. Huskers improved to 19 and 16 on the year, 13 and three in the Big Ten. The Hoosiers take just their second set off a top 25 team.